Shall I tell you the truth? Well, honesty is the best policy. That's what they say, isn't it? But I hope it's true. This is my secret. After the ruby thief has fled the scene, Matthew wakes up and tries reviving an unconscious Morpheus. While this continues, John arrives at a local diner and is served by Betty, the restaurant's friendly waitress. As she takes his order, a chatty John shows her his ruby and remarks he'd use the jewel to change the world. Oblivious to the ruby's power, Betty takes the comment as a joke and ignores it as she starts his order with a cup of coffee. While having his hot beverage, John quietly monitors the lively waitress and how she interacts with the diner's regulars. Minutes later, four local but interesting customers show up. Mark, an unemployed young man with an interview scheduled later that day, Judy, a woman searching for her missing girlfriend, and finally, married couple Kate and Gary. As the customers troop in, the bubbly waitress dashes from corner to corner, taking orders and making small talk. She meets with Mark and learns he's applying for a job at Vanguard, one of the town's most prominent firms. Learning this, Betty reveals Kate is Vanguard's CEO and offers to introduce Mark to her. Scared of making a bad impression, the young applicant thanks her for her offer but turns it down. Respecting his decision, Betty doesn't press the subject and returns to her job as she heads over to Kate and Gary's orders. Upon questioning, Kate opts for a salad, but Gary considers getting a double-decker burger. Unimpressed by her husband's diet choice, Kate makes a snarky remark about his weight, prompting Gary to settle for a salad. Meanwhile, an observant John watches the entire exchange and reaches a realization about human nature. The fugitive concludes that mankind is inherently dishonest as every human denies his deepest desires and wants. This point is proven by Gary's order change and Mark's fear of an introduction. Realizing this, John decides to use the ruby to unearth humans' true nature and rid people of their lies. Activating the ruby, John alters the servers' and customers' minds, cajoling them to speak brutal truths at all times and impulsively act on their deepest desires. Controlled by the ruby, Gary gets the double-decker, much to Kate's disapproval. While Betty introduces Mark to the CEO, pissed at her husband, Kate takes the introduction as an opportunity for payback and invites Mark to sit with her to make Gary jealous. Meanwhile, Betty heads to the kitchen and narrates the day's events to her colleague and work crush Marsh. The chatty waiter eagerly tries to get his attention, but Marsh ignores her and continues working. Desperate, Betty invites him over to her apartment for dinner. However, Marsh shows little interest in her, but instead asks about her adult son, Bernard. A curious Betty questions Marsh's sudden interest in her son, and this leads to a disturbing revelation. Thanks to the Ruby's influence, Marsh admits he's been having a secret affair with Bernard. Naturally, the news shocks the bubbly waitress, prompting her to smash some dishes as she storms out in a rage. The sound of clattering plates attracts Gary to the kitchen as he sparks a conversation with Marsh. Angered by Kate's interest in Mark, Gary confides in the diner worker and vents about his marriage. It turns out Kate is a rich, manipulative woman who abuses her power as a CEO to control his every move, essentially delegating him to the role of a trophy husband. While Gary laments his shitty marriage in the diner kitchen, Kate cozies up to Mark and begins flirting with the job applicant. At the other end of the diner, Judy meets Betty by the bathroom as the two women discuss their failing love lives. Judy reveals she had a fight with her girlfriend the previous night, which is probably why she went missing. A kind-hearted Betty consoles Judy as sexual tension builds between the two women. As a result of the Ruby's power, the couple is free of any restraints and acts on their urges as they share a passionate kiss. Moments later, Kate and Mark's urges are also amplified by the Ruby, prompting the duo to make love with one another. The trend continues with Gary and Marsh as both men also get down in the kitchen. After all three couples finish their steamy sessions, Judy and Betty hear sounds of a struggle and rush outside to see Gary attacking Mark. Fueled by jealousy, the angry husband pins Mark to the ground and chokes him. In an escape attempt, Mark frantically grabs a knife from the floor and plunges it into Gary's neck, instantly killing him. Witnessing the commotion, Betty realizes they're all being mind-controlled and spots John innocently eating an ice cream bucket by the corner. 
She recalls his strange comments about changing the world with his ruby and confronts him about it. Together with the other diner occupants, John admits he's responsible for their strange actions, but explains he only did that to reveal their true nature. Learning this, the group grows angry and rebukes him for controlling them. John takes their rebuttal as a sign of ingratitude and decides to punish them for it. Using the ruby, he controls the group to kill themselves via gruesome means. Under the jewel's influence, the group saws off their limbs, chops off their fingers, and gouges out their eyes, ultimately leading to their deaths. In the aftermath of the gruesome massacre, the fates are summoned to the scene as the deities possess Judy, Betty, and Kate's corpses. John questions the omniscient beings about his destiny, prompting the trio to give a troubling prophecy for the near future. The deities reveal John is destined to steal all of Morpheus's magic and would also crush the Dream Lord's life in his hands. As soon as they deliver this message, the fates disappear and Morpheus enters the diner. The Lord of Dreams asks John to return the ruby, but the murderer, emboldened by the fates' prophecy, refuses to give it back. Instead, he threatens to defeat Morpheus and steal his title as King of Dreams. Hearing this, Morpheus accepts his challenge for a fight and transports him to the Dreaming using his powers. Morpheus creates several illusions that trap and attack John. However, the man dispels these mirages and transports himself to Morpheus's palace, using the ruby's power. On his arrival, John targets the mystical jewel at Morpheus, which siphons all of the immortal's magic. Once this is completed, John crushes the ruby in his hands, fulfilling the fate's prophecy. Believing Morpheus to be dead, John celebrates his victory. However, his jubilations are cut short when he surprisingly finds himself in the immortal's hands. Upon questioning, Morpheus reveals the ruby contained all of his essence. Hence, when John crushed it, the Lord of Dreams, alongside all of his magic, was released. Now realizing the fate's prophecy was misleading, the murderer fears for his life. However, Morpheus spares John despite his crimes and returns the criminal to his hospital in the human world. Having regained the entirety of his magic, Morpheus exits the scene as he prepares to rebuild his kingdom alongside the human world.